Coins like Hedera HBAR and Render, as well as a mix between other AI and DPIN based projects, going to dominate this coming bull run. And I'm going to go ahead on record and say you're clinically insane if you don't consider at least a couple of these projects for your own portfolio. And the reason why I can get away with calling you clinically insane and kind of saying that crazy statement is because, as I will show you in this video, the charts based on the recent data and also what we're expecting to happen over the next two years in and out of crypto is all it took for me to be completely convinced that these two narratives and these two projects are going to smash it. So today I'm going to give you all the evidence and the reasons why. Don't take my word on it. Let me show you firsthand. And I guess the main purpose behind this video, guys, is to teach you something new and at least get you thinking in a different way, right? It's not to con solely convince you but it's to at least give you the opportunity to make a better judgment. And so if you do learn something new, do not forget, drop a like on the video. It really helps me out. But importantly, subscribe so that you can achieve your crypto goals. Now, I don't know if you've realized this or not, but Render and HBAR have been on a massive tear recently. More particularly, Render has made people very wealthy already. A lot of people are about a 6x up from its lows in the bear market. So you can only really imagine what the multiples will be for those people in the coming cycle. And look, I don't want to cut a long story short here, but I might have to because of the length of the video. But I wanted to say, you know, in respects to how large of a project Render really can be and will become, a 2 billion, 3 billion market cap is nothing in the grand scheme of things like Nagato points out over here on Twitter. By the way, if you're not following me on Twitter, you most definitely should be a lot of alpha drops over there first. And so again, don't be disincentivized by this massive growth. Always remember, zoom in to the one month time frame and have a look. Okay, are we pumped up right now? Is this FOMO buy or not? And if it's a FOMO buy, like it currently is, don't do it. Of course, you want to buy on a dip. Not at the very top, but again, in the grand scheme of things, everyone that buys in now will still make money. Same with HBAR, of course. HBAR is kind of taking the spotlight because it's pretty well a 2x up from its lows in the bear market, so not as impressive of Render. But keep in mind, you know, HBAR was a lot larger market cap based project than Render has been in the past. And I think time will really give HBAR the true show of why it's a quality project, as we'll touch on later on. Now, truth be told, I won't be touching too much on Render as a project today. I will be touching on HBAR a lot later on in the video because the main content in this video will be touching on AI and DPIN and how they work really well together, giving you some of these quality projects. Of course, hint, hint, Render is one of them. And since the main sort of takeaway of this video is going to be based on why Render effectively indirectly is good it's going to really not be necessary to talk too much about the project but if you did want to learn more about render and hbar i have a lot of content on the channel just go to the search bar type in render or rndr over here and then just find the individual videos talking about it and of course you guys know i've got a lot of hbar content on the channel as well now we'll start off by looking at the previous data what's happened so far in the bull market the last few months basically now we can kind of look at the top three narratives performing the best out of the whole entire crypto space and of course what is the top two well ai and dpin particularly dpin is number one here and ai is number two number three just for comparison's sake is layer twos you know everyone loves to talk about layer twos and why layer twos are the best but these two narratives beat layer twos, not by much, but they definitely beat them, okay? If you want to can kind of pair these projects to the global market cap, the global market cap would be somewhere down here. It'd pretty well look like a stable coin compared to these three, okay? So massive growth, don't let the chart disincentivize you or confuse you, massive compared to every other narrative. Now, I wanted to say before we continue, like, look, even though DPIN is technically speaking the number one performing narrative, a lot of these deep pin projects, Render, Flux, ICP, Akash, they've all got AI, you know, AI embedded within them. You know, our Render, for example, and Flux, heavily AI projects, okay? And so same with Potenza. You know, Potenza is an AI project, but it also has deep pin. Same with Fetch, same with Singularity Net, same with Ocean Protocol. It's all the same, okay? So that's why they really work well together because they pretty well all naturally are the same sort of thing. And that's why I wanted to make this video was to really shed some light on why they've performed so well and why they will continue, not just in 2025, but also beyond and giving you those coins. So AI deep in big data and Web3 layer one projects, I personally rank them all a scale of 10 out of 10 in terms of how much demand will be invested in them for this bull run. I've also got Web2 layer ones in here because as we'll see in a second, HBAR actually fits into a different category of layer one. It's not a Web3 layer one, 
in terms of its like focus within crypto primarily like Solana and Neo Protocol Cardano is, it is primarily focused within Web2 first, but it is making a massive dent right now into its Web3 growth because as I've always said, HBuy is just simply so in tune with the market, it's incredible, okay? Now, I don't want to make this an HBuy video. So ICP, Render, Fetch, and Flux, these guys do fit just as much into this mix of Web2 and Web3 as Hedera does as well, which makes them a really quality project. And why it is, you know, aside from the narratives, and we'll touch more on the narratives for the rest of the video, but why we want to look at a sort of combination of Web2 and Web3 is because it's going to be the best for you as an investor. 2025 is focused on Web3, okay? Which pretty much means that the projects that are focusing heavily on Web3 will have a lot of the dumb money invested in them because dumb money is pretty much what's running the market right now. Whereas Web2 focused projects like HBAR will really have their biggest moments in 2030 plus. That's the next bull run and beyond. That's where they really shine, okay? But actually, we're looking at really short-term and long-term growth here. That's what I'm kind of saying in this case. So we want a combination of both. We want to have a really massive pumps this time around and massive pumps in the future as well. Why? Why do you want short-term and long-term? Well, because money will flow again into the short-term coins faster, a lot sooner. And long-term means that we're going to be safeguarded. Let's just say, heaven forbid, something happens to you tomorrow. And whether you're in hospital, whether you're... You know, I don't want to go to that extreme, but you know whether you... you know, destroy your chances at making some gains in the cycle and you end up holding a lot of your tokens post 2025 at least you know you're in quality projects to actually make some pretty decent returns back in the subsequent cycle you're not in a shit coin where you won't see your money back like i had to do in the last cycle myself so here is one of the charts we'll begin which is a report from citigroup they made a few months back now and it pretty much talks about the CAGR or the compounded annual return growth for these projects. So how much growth they'll have year on year and also the TAM or basically the market size of the project. And two notable ones here are cloud computing, which we're going to pretty well call D-PIN because that kind of falls roughly in line with a lot of these D-PIN projects I'll share with you today. And of course, AI. Now notice AI is smaller than cloud computing, at least right now. And that's because the current market is smaller but the compounded annual growth rate is a lot higher, meaning that the chart for AI will look more like something like this versus cloud computing, which is a lot more steady, okay? Still grow, you know, it's a lot of growth. 15% year on year is crazy. Maybe even up to 25%, but AI, as we all know, is likely gonna be one of the biggest narratives globally than anything we've seen before because everything will run on AI very quickly. So again, what we're focusing on is projects that hit both of these areas, deep in AI, because that's a match made in heaven, not just for the short term, but also for the long term. Again, short term, we've already seen that massive proof of concept, basically the proof of growth, and now we're looking into beyond as well. So interestingly, we've got two notes here from very reputable people in the space. Leonard, the co-founder of a D-PIN, new D-PIN project at least called Peak Network, not currently out yet. He said the D-PIN sector will blossom in 2024, which is inherently linked with the AI boom. They work again together. Over here, the CMO of Dowmaker said D-PIN and AI are poised to be the power duo of 2024 because they complement each other in the most efficient way possible. Dowmaker, of course, being a launchpad slash venture capital fund. So, of course, they are very heavily connected and have a lot of research into the different narratives and growth aspects of crypto. So that's how they make their money back for all of their investors, okay? And so if we have a look at a recent report here from Masari, they said the deep in market size will grow from the current global 2.2 trillion, which is a lot of money, will reach about a 3.5 trillion market cap in the next four years. So I've kind of plotted this out from about 2.2 trillion in 2024 and what this will look like over the next you know, four or so years. So this will give you a rough indication of that size, which we're talking about a lot. Again, remember, if you think about it, Crypto being crypto, right? We're focusing on bleeding edge technology based on decentralized governance and decentralized technology. And you pair that with DPIN, which is again, decentralized physical infrastructure, you have a really good recipe for success. And the reason why we'll find more and more people gravitating towards this, and I've been screaming this for over 12 months now, is because a lot of these centralized cloud services, right? Amazon, Microsoft, Google, they take up 66% of the entire 
uh, sort of not deep in because they're not decentralized physical infrastructure, even though they kind of are, they aren't all in one location. This cloud sort of services and 66% of the market share, which is insane, right? You know, Ethereum at one point had a 40% of their entire node count on Amazon. So like I said then here, if Amazon or any of these you know companies decide to terminate either a project's hosted website or a whole entire uh, business operation or a bunch of nodes on a you know on a blockchain, then they could put they're gone and they can do that for any reason they so wish. So of course, decentralized GPU and cloud providers don't have that drawback for businesses and enterprises, and so of course they will choose to migrate over towards them if they can prove they're scalable. Hence why we come to this chart over here which is the state of D-PIN chart for uh, Masari's report. And they touch on a few projects, but their main takeaway in this case was we're looking at about a five to 10 year growth rate here before mass adoption really comes on board. Of course, as we know, these things aren't supposed to take overnight, which is really why crypto degens grind my gears when they say a project should be decentralized from the get-go. A project should be completely, you know, have everything in order from launch. No. And I suppose it doesn't happen like that. You have to have this multi-year growth in this network effect in order for the project to actually reach product market fit or be used in the way it's intended to be from the get-go. So over here, this report from Bloomberg touches on AI's growth, and they say about 42% year-on-year -year growth rate for this industry. Now, everyone's got their own little unique differences. Bloomberg says 42, somewhere else says 48, somewhere else says 36%. Who really knows? Take the average and we can kind of roughly figure it out. A lot of these different places do go conservative as well. So in my experience and my sort of inkling on this, I think that AI is going to be a lot faster grower than this. But nevertheless, right now, the current market cap size apparently is about 66 billion. I know that's hard to believe, but at least at a 42% growth rate, we're expected to hit about 400 billion by 2029, apparently 100 billion by 2025, uh, and about 800 billion by 2031. So again, we're looking at projects that are hitting these things in the short and long term, which as we know, they are, at least for crypto, you know, screw the real world for a second. I think we've seen with the likes of ChatGPT, OpenAI, so their, you know, sort of developing company has created Sora, which is pretty much where it's a text uh, to video prompt where you type in any bunch of text and it'll create like a cinematic basically of whatever you type in looks super realistic super super good and that's come this far in what like a year and a half two years since ai really started taking off thanks to open ai so you can only really imagine what the real world might, might take on but at least crypto like these dgens we really do believe that AI is going to be a big part of the bull run. So why not take advantage of that, right? Now, also, if you look at the global GDP and how AI will have an impact on that, based on this chart over here, we're of course currently here in 2024 at about a seven, if I can draw that straight, seven trillion market or at least GDP impact by the AI market. And by 2030, we'll look to be about 16 trillion. So that's more than double in the next six years, which is kind of crazy. Now, this is devised into four particular sections, labor, productivity, personalization, time saved, and quality. And of course, crypto projects will fit somewhere between them, depending on what they're trying to do for the economy at large, basically. Now, this report also came from Bloomberg, where they said generative AI is poised to expand its impact from less than 1% to 10% of total IT hardware, software services, ad spending, and the gaming market. So the blue bars represent the revenue. And of course, the uh, yellow line represents the spend in AI or for AI products. And of course, as that you know yellow line goes up, of course, the revenue will also increase for these projects, which is good for us because the revenue increases for the total AI market, the more these projects or people are going to want to buy into decentralized AI-based companies, aka deep in AI projects, and then that's going to bring in more revenue, meaning that more marketing for these projects, meaning that we get more exposure for our projects, meaning that we make more money. Guys, if you don't understand crypto or how to invest in crypto, I would really encourage you to have a look at business models. All these companies and all these projects, they focus heavily on marketing. I've spoken with God knows probably 10 or 12 at this point, large founders in these projects. And a lot of the time they do talk to me about these business model network effect you know, flow charts. It's a really pivotal part about how they're going to gain market share. I mean, you can be a 10 out of 10 project, but if you don't have the marketing, right, you're not going to perform well. Simple as that. And a lot of us are in this game to make money, right? So here is uh, Bloomberg's kind of by 2032 expectation of 
each individual part of the generative AI sector and kind of what their impact will be in terms of their billions. I've also kind of broken down software, hardware, software, hardware. You guys will have access to this sheet in the uh, free Discord down below. So I'm not going to really break those down. If you want to have a look into those, you definitely can. But again, we're kind of circling back to the main premise of this video. What happens when an altcoin is focused on both of these areas? Well, I've kind of already pointed it out, okay? But we have short-term and long-term success to say the least. Like this report or screenshot here also from Masari's uh, Deepin report. Over the next one or two years, there's going to be a lot of uh, the on-chain economy growing for these projects because remember they're trying to gain the market share from Web2 as well. So of course, as people realize centralized providers won't actually be a a viable long-term alternative, they're going to switch to what makes sense, which is decentralized services. And it's also better for the environment actually as well. If I'm able to provide idle GPU or CPU power to a global network, where then of course these enterprises can plug into and pull that data from, I'm making money and they're of course doing what they want to do for cheap and also it's energy efficient. So that's a big narrative moving into the next cycle, right? Focusing on the projects, Fetch, Flux, ICP, Nia, Aether, Renda, Singularity Net, Potenza, Akash Network, and Hive Mapper are all projects I would really get you to glue on. Now they're good because of course they fit into AI, Deepin, and or big data, but the pluses you can see on your screen here also mean that you know these projects focus on other aspects as well you know some focus more on ai than deep in some are more deep in than ai but they all kind of have their own unique sort of edge over the next right for example gaming you know aether focuses more on gaming and the metaverse than you know other things as well as ai for example right oracle over here of course you know the, these projects have their own uh, other aspects that they can offer you know icp is pretty well an oracle at this point as well cloud infrastructure you guys get the idea, okay? So what happens when you kind of pair more of these big narratives together? And what my kind of research has told us is that they pretty much allow the project to get higher lows, right? Layer one, AI and Deepin, for example, you might be Flux Network over here. And on these different narrative pumps, you create higher low, higher low. And whatever your project is primarily known for, like Flux, for example, might primarily be known for Deepin, which it basically is. It's largest, biggest pump will push up with deep in and that's all we'll obviously make ourselves. But what you really want to do is have your whole portfolio looking like this. If you again double up on a lot of these different projects, right? Like you double up, if you bought all these, hypothetically speaking, your portfolio is going to look very, very similar to a single chart because a lot of these projects, again, build off each other. They're very similar and they're focused on really powerful narratives, eight, nine, and 10. I've got a whole list. The list goes right down to a four out of 10. And so what I'm personally doing is buying projects that double or triple up in the eight to 10 out of 10 narratives because that's where the big money is coming. I do want to briefly touch, of course, back on a HBAR because HBAR actually fits, at least it's aligning itself with some of these big emerging narratives, again, AI and deep in particularly for this bull run. They're very, very smart. For example, their recent partnership over here with the Ministry of Investment of Saudi Arabia, they launched a $250 million deep tech venture studio, pretty well focused on enabling or bringing on more of these companies wanting to build technology in AI, blockchain and robotics, IoT, virtual reality, quantum computing, of course, deep in fills somewhere in that line as well to, to kind of build in Saudi Arabia, okay? And there's a big, big grant on the end of it for each of these uh, projects that build through the Deep Venture Studio, 250,000 US dollars to 500,000 uh, dollars venture capital investment if they go and build on it. Again, this is all in combination with HBAR, okay? But this is really, really big stuff and will now enable the HBAR network to really grow in these different sectors. And we know it has been okay because they've recently started talking about one of their new ecosystem projects called Neuron. And Neuron over here is looking to really, you know, be heavily involved with Deepin, right? open source public network for building, finding, and connecting services. They're looking to increase or improve the performance and uh, cost and robustness of service networks worldwide, reducing risk associated with using intermediaries. So they're building on HBAR, a very basic website, a very basic project, at least on the outlook of it, but they have gone on record to say, I don't think I have the chart on here. No, I don't. Uh, they have gone on record to say they admit that it's very basic, but you know, they're looking to build a network and build out the project. So big stuff. Also, as we know, Mondelez, which is worth around $100 billion, who actually owns the likes of Oreo, Cadbury, Toblerone, and Milka, and other sweet companies. Yes, 
they own Dam Cadbury, right? They've actually come on as a governing council member. And also they are looking to leverage the HBAR network itself to focus on things like supply chain management and also enrich their business processes, which makes the most sense. HBAR is a product or project specifically designed for fast, very, very fast and secure transactions, okay? Which is perfect for the likes of Deepin AI and all the rest of it, okay? So big, big ups to HBAR. And this kind of reminds me of Chainlink, okay? Chainlink, you know, back in middle last year, like so eight or nine months ago, they were like, hey, we just launched our CCIP massive upgrade. It was huge. No one spoke about it, okay? It wasn't until people were like, ooh, Chainlink, ooh, Chainlink, and people started whispering about it. Everyone gravitated back to CCIP, which is, again, why I build my research model on things like this, popularity, aka what has occurred over the last 12 or so months in recent times for a project, news, announcements, partnerships, and how that might impact the price in the next 12 to 24 months. And HBAR has a very, very big score in this sec uh, section because as you can see, it's doing quite a lot already. So guys, with that being said, thank you so much for watching today's video. And look, if you have enjoyed or learned something new, help me out and support the channel by dropping a like on the video. But importantly, I want you guys to subscribe, not for me, but for you. Let's do it. Okay, all the best. Have a great day.